So let's get started talking about linear first order differential equations or ODEs, ordinary differential equations. So these are of the form dy on dx plus a function of x times y is equal to q of x, where q is a function of x. Now, of course, the x could be a t for time as well. All right, so the first thing we do is introduce an integrating factor. i of x is e to the power of the integral of p of x with respect to x. But it first has to be in this form. So you have to have the two things on the left-hand side of your equation, the first derivative, and then a function of that independent variable times y. So once you have that, you can introduce the integrating factor, which is e to the power of the integral of p of x dx. Okay, and so once you have that, you multiply by it. And what does that look like? Well, then we have e to the integral of p of x dx times dy on dx plus p of x times e to the integral of p of x dx times y equal to q of x e to the integral of p of x dx. Okay, and so what does this do? Well, the left-hand side packs up using the product rule to form the derivative of a product. Okay, so d on dx, or the derivative with respect to x, of the product of y times e to the integral of p of x dx is equal to q of x times e to the integral of p of x dx. Okay, so this happens. Now, why does that happen? Well, if you use the product rule on this, this is the line you'll get. So we have the product rule in reverse to compress or pack up this sum into the derivative of a single product. Okay, so let's see why that works. Well, remember, the product rule takes one of these multiplicands, puts it on the other side, okay? So that's, that's for example, y times the derivative of e to the integral of p of x dx. Now, the chain rule says that that derivative, the derivative of e to the integral of p of x dx, is p of x times e to the integral of p of x dx. So you would let u equal the integral of p of x dx and then use the chain rule on that. And this is what you would get when you first pulled out the y. Now, swapping the roles, you pull the e to the power of the integral of p of x dx out and differentiate y, the other one. And that is this term. So this is simply the product rule in reverse. All right, but what happens now, magically, we have a very separable equation. So we want to separate this. So what it looks like is d in brackets y e to the integral of p of x dx equals the integral of, and we put the integral bracket on that as well, the right-hand side, q of x, e to the integral of p of x dx and then integrate this entire thing with respect to x. So it's possible, right? And what we have on the left-hand side, because we're just integrating one with respect to this, we have y e to the integral of p of x dx equal to this integral right here. And if we can do this integral on the right-hand side, then we can just divide by e to the power of the integral of p of x dx and solve the equation for y. All right, but you really need to see an example of this. So let's have a look at an example here in question one.
which says solve the differential equation dy on dx plus y equals e to the minus x. Okay, first question, is this in the correct form? Yes, it is. We have dy on dx and the single y with a function of x next to it. That function of x is p of x is equal to 1. Okay, so it's in the right form. Now, our integrating factor, i of x, is e to the integral of 1 with respect to x. So the integral of 1 is x. And we don't want the plus c because we just want one integrating factor. We don't want the general solution to this integral. So we just have e to the x. Okay, so now we are going to multiply by that e to the x in the equation throughout. So e to the x dy on dx plus e to the x y equals e to the x times e to the minus x. Okay, now we know how the left-hand side should pack up. We use the product rule in reverse. And so the left-hand side is the derivative of y times e to the x. We can simplify the right-hand side by adding the exponents. So we have e to the power of 0, which is 1. Okay, so now that we have this, we want to integrate both sides. So the integral of 1 with respect to y e to the x is the integral of 1, this one, with respect to x. Okay, now the left-hand side integral is really easy. It's just y e to the x. And the right-hand side is the integral of 1 with respect to x, which is just x. And we do want a plus c here because we are solving for the general solution to this equation. But we don't want it in the integrating factor because we just want one integrating factor that works. All right, so now let's solve this equation for y. So we have y equals x e to the minus x plus c e to the minus x, multiplying throughout by e to the minus x. And this is the general solution. Okay, let's move on to question two, where we'll see another example. So in question two, we're solving dy on dx plus 3y equals e to the minus 3x. Now, is this in the right form? Yes, it is, because the y, together with this coefficient, a function of x, are on the same side of the equation as the dy on dx. And then the function of x on its own is on the right-hand side. So here's our q, here's our p. Okay, and so then, since it's in the correct form, we'll declare our integrating factor, i of x, equal to e to the integral of 3 with respect to x. Right, now the integral of 3 with respect to x is 3x plus c, but we don't want the c, so we'll write this e to the 3x. Okay, now multiplying throughout by e to the 3x, we have e to the 3x dy on dx plus 3e to the 3x times y is equal to e to the 3x times e to the minus 3x. Okay, and so the left-hand side, we know that using the product rule in reverse, it's going to give us y times e to the 3x. And on the right-hand side, we can add the exponents, and we just have e to the 0, which is 1. Okay, so now this equation is separable, and we can separate it and solve. So we have the integral of 1 with respect to y e to the 3x is equal to the integral of 1 with respect to x. Integrating the left-hand side with respect to y e to the 3x gives y e to the 3x. And the integral on the right-hand side is x 
whoops, I should just have a bracket, but I don't even need that bracket, do I? So just X plus C. Okay, great. Let's divide throughout by E to the three X. So we have Y equals X E to the minus three X plus C E to the minus three X. And we're done with question two. So let's move on to question three. where we're asked to solve 2 dy on dx is equal to 5 minus 6x. Now that's not quite in the right form, is it? So we need to rearrange this first to put this in the right form. So that would mean taking this minus 6y and adding 6y to both sides so it comes over to the left-hand side. So when we do that, we get 2 dy on dx plus 6, y is 5. Now, we want this dy on dx just on its own, so let's divide throughout by 2. So we have dy on dx plus 6 over 2 is 3, y is 5 over 2. Okay, now it's in the right form, and so our integrating factor is e to the integral of with respect to x and so this is e to the 3x so we multiply by that but we know how the left hand side is going to look so let's just take the shortcut of writing that straight away at this point y e to the 3x and then we do have that integrating factor on the right hand side so 5 halves e to the 3x Okay, let's finish it off by integrating. Integrating on the left gives us y e to the 3x. Integrating on the right is the integral of 5 over 2 e to the 3x with respect to x. So we can pull the 5 over 2 out to the front of the integral. Now, if we were to differentiate e to the 3x, using the chain rule, we would have an extra 3 come out in front of the e to the 3x. So if we're going the other direction, we want to put a 1 third in front of the e to the 3x. And so this integral is 5 over 2 times 1 over 3 e to the 3x and then plus c. And remember, this is y e to the 3x. Okay, so next, let's simplify this and divide throughout by e to the 3x. So we get y, which is a function of x, is 5 over 6. e to the 3x over e to the 3x is 1, and then plus c, e to the minus 3x. And we're done with question 3. Okay, let's do question 4. Okay, in question four, we have dy on dx equals 3x squared times 2 minus y. Now, I can see that this is separable. And so we could solve this using methods of separable equations. However, we should probably stick to calling this a linear equation. So let's expand the right-hand side. And so we've got dy on dx is equal to 6x squared for the expansion of these two, and then minus 3x squared y for the product of 3x squared and minus y. Okay, so it's almost clear that it's linear. We just need to take this minus 3x squared y over to the left-hand side on the same side as the dy on dx. So let's do that now. So dy on dx plus 3x squared y equals 6x squared. Okay, now it's clear that it's linear. It's in the right form. What's our p of x? It's this coefficient of y, 3x squared. And the q of x, is 6x squared. 
Okay, fantastic. So let's declare our integrating factor. I of x is e to the power of the integral of 3x squared dx. So the integral of 3x squared is x cubed. So we have e to the x cubed. And we don't want the plus c, remember. All right, so great. We're going to multiply by this integrating factor throughout in our equation, but we know how this packs up. It packs up as the derivative of the product of y and e to the x cubed. And then the right-hand side is 6x squared e to the x cubed. Okay, so it remains to integrate this. So integrating on the left, we are going to get y e to the x cubed. Integrating on the right-hand side, we have the integral of 6x squared e to the x cubed with respect to x. Now that integral looks hard, but it's not because it'll work out nicely using the substitution, which is the analogy of the chain rule. Because the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, or a constant multiple times what we have next to this. All right, so let's let u equal to x cubed. Remember what we do here is we differentiate, take the u on dx, it's 3x squared, which is a multiple of this. So this will work out nicely. And so we'll do our algebraic trick so that we say that we're going to replace dx with du over 3x squared by substitution. Okay, I'm going to put this in a box, it's my scratch paper box here, and then we'll come over here and finish our integral. So we have the integral of 6x squared e to the u, and we're replacing dx with du on 3x squared. All right, so now you can see what happens. Magically, we can cancel the x squareds, and we're just going to get 6x squared over 3x squared is 2. And we can pull that 2 outside the integral. So we have the integral of e to the u with respect to u, which is e to the u. So our integral here is 2 e to the power of x cubed and then plus c. And this is y e to the x cubed. Okay, so it just remains now to divide throughout by e to the x cubed. And so we're going to get y equals 2 plus c e to the minus x cubed. And that's our general solution to question 4. Okay, let's move on to question 5. Solve the differential equation, 3x dy on dx minus y equals 9x. Now we need to first put this in the right form, and that would mean to divide throughout by 3x. So let's do that. dy on dx minus 1 over 3x times y is equal to 9x over 3x is 3. Okay, so this right here is our p of x. This 3 is our q of x. So the integrating factor is e to the integral of minus 1 over 3x with respect to x. So we can pull out the minus a third and integrate x to the minus 1, and so we'll get the natural log of x. So we have e to the minus 1 third ln of x, and we don't want the c. Now let's rearrange this so that we write this as e to the ln of x, all to the power of minus 1 third. Because e to the ln of x is just x. So our integrating factor is x to the minus one-third. Okay, so let's multiply by that throughout. And we are going to get the derivative with respect to x of the product of this integrating factor in y. And remember, this 
happens because we're using the product rule in reverse, packing that up. And then on the right hand side, we have three times this integrating factor, x to the power of minus one third. Okay, so now we need to integrate both sides. And so we're going to get x, y, x to the minus one third equals the integral of three x to the minus one third with respect to x. Now that minus one third is not equal to minus one. So we just add one to the exponent and divide by our new exponent. So we have three x to the power of one minus one third. Now one minus one third is two thirds. So we're dividing here by two thirds. And then we want a plus C. Okay, so we now need to simplify this right-hand side by multiplying top and bottom by 3 and simplifying that exponent. So we have then 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 over 2, x to the power of 2 thirds plus c is equal to y x to the power of minus 1 third. And so if we multiply throughout by x to the plus one third, this x to the minus one third will vanish and we will have solved for y. So y is equal to x to the power of two thirds plus one third is one times nine over two in front. Forgot about that. Okay. And then plus c x to the power of one third. And there's our solution. All right, let's move on to question six. Was that? No, that, yeah. Question six. Okay. So question six says, solve y dash, which incidentally is just dy on dx, equals x squared y plus 3x squared. All right, so we need to put this in the right form. So the coefficient function of y is this x squared or, or minus that because we're going to bring it over to the left-hand side. So let's do that. y dash minus x squared y equals 3x squared. Okay, p of x is minus x squared. So the integrating factor is e to the power of the integral of minus x squared with respect to x. Okay, so we add one to that exponent and we get three. We have minus one third x to the power of three. So we have our integrating factor now. All right, great. Let's multiply that throughout in this equation. On the left, this will pack up as y e to the minus one third x cubed differentiated with respect to x. On the right hand side, we'll get three x squared e to the minus one third x cubed. Okay, let's integrate both sides y e to the minus one third x cubed on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have the integral of three x squared e to the minus one third x cubed with respect to x. All right, now notice that if you differentiate that exponent there, you will have a multiple of three x squared, a constant multiple of that. So this will work out nicely by substitution. So let's let, guess, where do I want to put this? Over here, that looks good. Okay, u equal minus one third x cubed, differentiate, take the u on dx, and we get minus x squared. And so we replace dx with u over minus x squared in here. So let's do that. So integral of 3x squared e to the u, du over minus x squared by substitution. Okay, now let's simplify. 
So 3x squared over minus x squared is minus 3. So let's put that minus 3 in front of the integral. Okay, so we have the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So we have minus 3 e to the power of minus 1 third x cubed and then plus c. Now this is y e to the minus 1 third x cubed. Okay, so we want to take this equation, multiply throughout by e to the plus 1 third x cubed, and that will give us the solution. y equals minus 3 plus c e to the 1 third x cubed. And there we go. There's our solution. So let's move on now to question 7. And this will be the last first order linear equation that will solve with analytic methods. Okay, question seven. We have y dash plus two y is sine of x. Okay, this is already in the correct form. So our integrating factor is e to the integral of two with respect to x. So e to the two x. Okay, now multiplying throughout by that, we have left-hand side packs up and we've got y e to the 2x differentiated with respect to x. But the right-hand side is a little bit tricky looking, looking forward to that integration. Okay, because when we integrate this, this, this will require us to use probably the integration by parts formula, right? Okay, so left-hand side gives us y e to the 2x and the right-hand side is the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx. Now, what do I want to do with this? Um, okay, let's convert sine x. Do I want to convert sine x into a derivative or do I want to convert e to the 2x into a derivative? Let's go for e to the 2x. Okay, so we'll have then sine x derivative with respect to x of e to the 2x, but I'm writing something that's not quite true yet until I compensate for what I'm doing by putting in a 1 half. Because if I actually differentiate e to the 2x with respect to 2x, the chain rule would have me multiply by a 2 in order to get um, well, that's what the derivative would be. So if I want to get e to the 2x, I've got to introduce a 1 half. So the, the 1 half and the 2 cancel. All right, so now that we have this, so let's write this as 1 half integral of sine x with respect to e to the 2x. And now I can use the integration by parts formula. So bring it over here to the left because it's going to have two terms. So we have 1 half the product of both of those things, so sine x times e to the 2x, and then we subtract the other way around. Now notice I'm just distributing this one half over both terms. I'm swapping the role of these now in this next one, so e to the 2x d sine of 2 of x, but then I want to introduce a dx dx so that I can trade this in for a derivative. Now, the derivative of sine is cos. Okay, so we get 1 half sine x e to the 2x. And then we have minus a half integral of e to the 2x times cos of x dx. All right, so this doesn't look like it's any closer to our solution. So what we need to do now is try this again. So let's use integration by parts again on this. I'll turn e to the 2x again into a derivative. So we have 1 half sine x e to the 2x minus 1 quarter integral of cos of x times the derivative of 
e to the 2x. Now you can see I've introduced another one half here to compensate for making this a derivative. Okay, so that's what I've done here. Because if I differentiate e to the 2x, I bring down a 2, so I get 2e to the 2x. And so to make this the same as the line above, I introduce another one half. All right, so now let's get rid of the two dx's so I can clearly use the integration by parts formula on this piece. So we have one half sine of x e to the 2x minus one quarter the product of cos of x and e to the 2x. So e to the 2x cos of x. And then we swap these around. Okay, swap the roles of these in the subtraction, but I'm going to need an, a minus and a minus, so that'll be plus one quarter integral of e to the 2x. Derivative of cos is minus sine, so in brackets minus sine of x dx. All right, and so now we can bring out the minus out here and notice that this is something that we started with up here, okay? This is the thing we were trying to solve for. So in other words, what we have is, and I'm gonna need another piece of paper here because it's getting a little bit complicated. So we started up here with this, so we've worked out then that the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx is equal to 1 half e to the 2x. Now I'm going to factorize the two of these. Okay, so that leaves sine x minus cos x. And the reason why I factorize that piece, or these two, uh, and I need, incidentally, I need another half in here, don't I, to make that true. The reason why I factorize that is to just pack this up a little bit tighter, because you can see I'm running out of space. All right, and then this is minus a quarter integral of e to the 2x sine x dx. Okay, so now we have the same thing on the left and right hand sides. So what we want to do next is do a little bit of algebra. Take this over to the left hand side and then um, divide by the constant next to it and we have our integral. Okay, so another piece of paper here. Let's keep going. So we'll add this to the other side and we get 5 over 4. So 5 over 4 integral of e to the 2x sine x dx is 1 half e to the 2x in brackets sine x minus a half cos x. Okay, so we just need to multiply by 4 fifths. And we have what we're after. Okay, so this integral, e to the 2x sine x dx is equal to 5, sorry, 4 over 5. Now let's bring out another 1 half out of this. So times 1 over 4 e to the 2x 2 sine x minus cos x. So I have factored out another one half out of this expression, which gives us a one quarter in front, and also multiplied by the inverse of five over four, which is four fifths. Okay, and so we will get one quarter. No, sorry, one fifth. E to the two x, two sine x minus cos x. And let's be careful and put plus C. Okay, so we've done the hard integral. Now re let's remember what this integral was. If we scroll back up to the top, 
we had, and by the top, I mean this. So we have y e to the two x is this integral. So let's just put y e to the two x here. And now we just need to divide throughout by y e to the two by e to the two x, and we'll get our general solution to this problem. Okay, so y equals one fifth. 2 sine of x minus cos of x brackets plus c e to the minus 2x. And we're done. Okay, Euler's method is a method for solving a differential equation when you might not be able to solve that easily analytically. It gives you a numerical method. And so what you will get is a, is a sequence of points that are reasonably close to the solution. But the downside of it is that errors tend to grow upon errors. And so uh, you get farther and farther away from your solution, especially when, or it's especially apparent when the step size delta x is reasonably large. Okay, so we're going to do some of these by hand. So now we have the differential equation dy on dx in question 13 is the square root of 2x plus 1. And we have y of 0 is 2. Now this one's separable, and so yes, if you can integrate the square root of 2x plus 1, then you can solve that easily. Let's do it numerically, supposing that it's not so easy to integrate this. Okay, so we set up a sequence. Now the first term of our sequence is coming from this. So we have x0, y0 is the point 0, 2. Okay, now what we want to do is find x1, y1. So to get the next point, x1, y1, we have x1 is equal to x0 plus delta x, and so that's 0 in this case, plus delta x. Here we're given that we should use delta x equal to 0 0.3, so x1 is 0 0.3. Well, that was easy. Now to get y1, we use the sequence y n plus 1, which in this case is n, or 1 plus 0 is 1, so y1 is equal to y0 plus f of x0, y0 times delta x, which is 0 0.3. But what's f of x and y? Well, it's the right-hand side of dy on dx. Okay, and so this is just the square root of 2x0 plus 1. And here y0 is 2. So this is 2 plus 0 0.3 times the square root of 2 times 0 and then plus 1. All right, so... 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. So we have 2 plus 0.3 is 2.3, and so this is our y1. Okay, so from that, we form a point. x1, y1 is equal to... 0 0.3, 2.3. Okay, so next let's form x2, y2. So x2 is equal to x1 plus delta x, which is 0 0.3. And so x1 is 0 0.3, so 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.6. Now y2 is equal to y1 plus f of x1, so x1 was 
and y1 is 2.3 and this is times delta x which is 0.3 okay so we need to take this sub it into here because this is our function of x and y so y2 equals now y1 was 2.3 so plus the square root of uh, 2 times x1 which is 0.3 plus 1 and then we multiply this entire square root by 0.3 so put that in front Okay, and so this is 2.3 plus 0 0.3 times the square root of uh, 1.6. And so for that, I get, when I simplify this, I get 2.6794, I'll just write it, 2.67. 9, 4, 7, 3, and so on. Okay, so from this we form a point. And so we have the point x2, y2 is equal to 0 0.6, 2.67, let's call it 9, 5. Okay, let's do another term. So y3, or first let's say x3, x3 equals 0.6 plus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.9. And y3 is equal to y2 plus 0 0.3 times the square root of 2 times the previous, is it the previous x value? Yeah, 0. 0.6, and then plus 1. Okay, and so y2 was 2.6795, and then we have 0 0.3 times the square root of 1 plus 1.2 is 2.2. And so for that, I'm getting 3.12444, but let's just chop it off at that. Okay, so from this, let's form a point. x3, y3 is the point. 0 0.9, Okay, great. So let's do one more. So x4 is equal to 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3, which is 1.2. And then y4 is equal to y3 plus 0 0.3 times the square root of 2 times 0 0.9 plus 1. And so we have y4 is equal to 3.1244. Plus 0 0.3 times the square root of 1 plus 1.8, so 2.8. And so when we simplify that, I get 6.75088, so let's call that zero, zero 09. And so let's form a point out of this. So we have x4, y4, 
is equal to 1.2,6.7509. Okay, so we've generated a sequence of points that should fit somewhat closely to the solution to the differential equation. Now, let's see whether I can easily do this for you in Mathematica. So I've pulled up Mathematica there. I'm going to scroll down here. So let's first seek out our analytic solution to this. So to do that, we want to integrate the square root of 2x plus 1. And I'm fairly sure that can be done using substitution. So I'll just write integrate here. SQRT. 2x plus 1, and I want to integrate this with respect to x. And so as expected, the analytic solution to this, let's write this down here. So analytic solution is y equals 1 third 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2, and then plus c. So Mathematica leaves off the plus c there. Okay, so I want to now plot this. Actually, you know what? We had an initial value as well, didn't we? So we can find out what the c was. We have y of 0 is 2. So with that, let's use it to find out what the c is. So 2 is equal to 1 third. Now we're subbing in 0 here, so we're taking 1 to the power of 3 over 2, so we just get 1 third times 1 plus c. Okay, so this tells us that c is 2 minus 1 third. So that is 6 minus 1 over 3, which is 5 over 3. Okay, and so that gives us an analytic solution to this initial value problem being y equals one-third outside of 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 and then plus 5. So I've just factored out the one-third out of both terms. And here's our analytic solution. All right, so let's just take that and plot it. In Mathematica. So I want to plot, I'm pasting this here, but I'll change it to our exact or particular solution. Oops, wrong way. Okay. And I want to plot this as x goes from 0 to, I don't know, where did we stop here? We stopped at 1.2, so let's do like 1.5. Okay, so we've got a little curve there. Now I want to call this A and then suppress the output of that. And then for B, because I want to show the plot, the points that we've plotted together, so I'll list plot, and then I'll list the points that we found. Okay, so the first one we had was our initial value, which was 0, 2. Okay, and then we had x1, y1, so 0 0.3, comma, 2.3. And then we found x2, y2, 0 0.6, 2. 0.6795. And then on the next page, we found x3y3, which was 0 0.9, and the y value 3.1244. Okay, next, x4, y4, 1.2, 6.75, 
zero nine. Okay, I'll suppress the output on that, and then let's show the two of these together. Okay, and so you can see we have Here's our solution curve in blue, and then the points that you see underneath it, initially they're, they're spot on, but then it starts to drift away. So this is the error growing on itself because you're following a tangent line at each of these points. And so it, it follows parallel to a tangent line there, it follows to get you the, to the next step. And so the errors grow upon themselves. So it is a little bit dangerous to use this with a large step size. Now there are better methods than Euler's method. So typically people like to use RK4, which is run, run cut a fourth order that's taken from a fourth order uh, Taylor series expansion. So that would be much closer to the actual curve because you are taking an approximation that comes from way down in the fourth order Taylor expansion. So the errors in using RK4 are much, much less.